Hello, my name's Rob. I'm a dietitian in the UK, and in this video, I wanted to talk about weight loss medication. So part of my role is to support people to lose weight, and this question has come up quite a few times already. What's out there? What's available? What's effective? And in some cases, how much does it cost? The first medication I wanted to discuss, and the one that's been around the longest, is Orlistat. Uh, it also goes by the brand name Zenical, and this is a fat binder, so it prevents your body from absorbing up to a third of the fat that you eat. Usually it's only indicated for people who are obese, so of a BMI over 30 or of a BMI over 27 in conjunction with other health conditions such as diabetes or cardiovascular disease. The medication comes in a 120 milligram tablet and that's taken with each of the meals. Uh, you can take it just before, during or up to an hour after the meal and as I said it prevents your body from absorbing that fat and then obviously that reduces the amount of calories that you get into your system. All of that is a prescription only medication so it would need to be prescribed within those guidelines and people will usually stay on it for about 12 weeks. Uh, if you see 5% weight loss in that time then it's considered to be effective for you and people can stay on it longer but it is important to follow a nutritionally balanced diet because you can potentially become deficient in fat soluble vitamins if you're not careful which is why it's usually used within weight management services. There is a over-the-counter version called Ali. Um, that's a 60 milligrams, that's half the strength. Because it's not quite as strong, you can expect to perhaps not absorb up to a quarter of the fat that you eat, uh, but it functions in much the same way. Some of the side effects, as you might imagine, is if you're not absorbing that fat, then it's got to come out somewhere. So you might get quite fatty stools. If you do eat a particularly fatty meal, then some people have said, you know, the consequences can be a little bit catastrophic. And I think this is why a lot of people don't tend to stay on this very long. Okay, so the next medication isn't an easy one to say. So let's give it a go. I think it's naltrexone bupropion. Um, also goes by the brand name Mysimba, which is much easier to say. This is a medication that actually works on the brain, so it reduces appetite and hunger signals. Mysimba does have marketing authorization within the UK, so it's available to buy, but it's not available on prescription through the NHS. The indications for its use are quite similar to all of that in that either you have a BMI over 30 or a BMI over 27 with other health conditions such as hyperglycemia, dyslipidemia or hypertension. The medication should be assessed at 16 weeks use and if someone's not lost 5% of their weight um, within that time, then they're discouraged from continuing on because it may not be effective for them. My Simba is not recognised within its marketing authorization for use in the NHS. Although it was found to be effective for weight loss, it has not been deemed cost effective based on the current evidence. The next medication I wanted to talk about, and this is one that's come up in conversation quite a few times now, is liraglutide, or uh, goes by the brand name Saxenda. This is a GLP-1 medication, so it's a hormone, a synthetic hormone, that mimics something that happens in the body already. So this hormone suppresses appetite um, and is particularly effective for those that seem to have this dysregulation between their appetite and how much they eat. So they'll often find they're overeating and they're just not getting that signal to say you're full, you can stop eating. Liraglutide is available on the NHS, but the criteria for its use is quite specific. So it's only indicated for those of a BMI over 35 five um, or those from a black or min uh, minority ethnic background with BMI of 32.5 just because we see they're at a higher risk of complications from obesity at a lower body weight. Patients will also need to have non-diabetic hyperglycemia so this would be a HbA1c in the range of 42 to 47 and they need to be at high risk of cardiovascular disease from things like high blood pressure or dyslipidemia. And then it's only to be used within tier three weight management services within the UK. So very strict, stringent criteria for use within the NHS. 
the efficacy of liraglutide in combination with diet and exercise regimes has been studied and one of the big studies that came out had over 5,000 participants and it did show that in comparison to placebo those on the medication lost between 5 to 10 percent of their body weight within that period which was a significant increase over the placebo group. From the studies we found that the majority of the weight loss whilst on liraglutide happens within the first year. However participants were able to maintain weight loss up to 160 weeks and again those who were on the medication were able to maintain their new lower weight much more effectively than those who were on placebo. Something I think it is very important to bear in mind for those considering liraglutide is that unlike the other medications which were tablets, liraglutide is a daily injection. Although people are trained how to deliver the injection themselves, this is still obviously quite a step up from just taking a tablet. One of the most common side effects of liraglutide is either nausea, diarrhea, vomiting or constipation. However, this does seem to ease off over time as people build up a tolerance to the medication. For those who may not be eligible or aren't prepared to wait for this medication through the NHS, it is available privately. The criteria for its use isn't quite as stringent, so like the other medications again, it's a BMI over 30 or a BMI over 27 with other weight-related comorbidities such as hypertension, dyslipidemia or obstructive sleep apnea. There are a range of different pharmacies offering it and they do require a consultation to make sure you're suitable, that there aren't any contraindications and you'll also receive support through lifestyle interventions during this time as well. Okay, last one I wanted to discuss today is semaglutide or ozempic. So interestingly, this medication isn't approved for use as a weight loss drug in the UK. It is approved as a diabetes management drug and it has been shown to be quite effective. And one of the other effects that it, it has is weight loss. It is used in the USA as a weight loss medication. It was only very recently approved for use in that capacity. And we are seeing a number of places within the UK offering it as a weight loss drug, but this is off license. So although the drug has been tested and shown to be safe and effective for weight loss, it's not been approved for that in the UK. It does require a very similar set of criteria as well. So in terms of BMI, um, other health conditions, and you are gonna to have to be approved uh, for the drug to make sure it's safe for you. This is certainly an area of healthcare that I'm sure we're going to see lots of development in. Other medications are going to come along. It'll be interesting to see what's approved for use on the NHS, what's cost effective and what becomes available privately. Uh, I'm also very aware that some of these medications are very expensive as well so we're going to have people who can afford them and those who can't and if they're not on the NHS where does that leave some people? But this is a, a bigger question than I'm able to answer in this video. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this one informative. If you liked the video, please give me a like. I like to know that people are enjoying it. And if this is an area that you're particularly interested in, so in terms of healthy eating, weight management, diabetes, then please subscribe and you'll catch my next videos when they arrive. All the best. See you again.